Hello, Mindfulnistas. How are you? Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. It's me, Regina Renee from Mindful and Melanated, and we are here for our second episode of the Mental Health Mentor. And I have with me Dr. Mercedes Okasi. Thank you so much for joining hey, us thank you. today. She is going to be talking about uh, self-care with us today. And I'm really, really grateful for her to come on to the show and talk about self-care because you guys know me, I am all about the self-care. So before we jump into that, um, doctor, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Dr. Mercedes Okosi. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist in New York City. Um, I'm a full-time psychologist at New York University. I work on a PTSD study. So I work with uh, women and their children who've experienced traumatic situations. Most of the time, um, they're women of color who are living in poverty mm -hmm. um, and have experienced things like domestic violence or different types of physical or sexual abuse throughout their lives. And then I also do a part-time private practice where I see a wider range of people with um, issues ranging from anxiety to depression to also trauma um, and just relational uh, and stress-related issues. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for the uh, important work that you do. Um, it's very, very needed. And trauma, a lot of us in, our, in this community we deal with trauma and um, trauma-informed, culture-competent providers are so difficult to find. So mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for the work that you do thank you. using that path. So let's jump right in. So if you guys have any questions um, for us, just please put it into the comment section, into the chat, and I'll make sure that I um, ask the questions on your behalf for you. So um, the first question I want to ask you is, the theme for this month for January, since it's like the new year, New Year's resolutions and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to establish healthy routines, right? To mm -hmm. help us manage our um, mental health and wellness. Why do you think it's so important for us to have a routine? Mm -hmm. So before I get into that, I want to uh, clarify the definition of uh, self-care. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll go into... Uh, what a self-care routine could mean for you. So a lot of people kind of mix up self-care with like things that are actually distractions or like indulgences. Mm -hmm. But uh, a basic definition of self-care is doing certain activities um, or creating certain boundaries that help to meet a need when you are... Um, when there's a need that hasn't been met or when there's something that needs to be done to achieve uh, balance and stability in your life. So for example, basic things that people uh, take for granted um, actually are very important and foundational to self-care, like getting regular sleep, mm. drinking enough water, eating uh, nutritional foods, and like moving your body by doing some form of exercise. All of those things are activities that we need to do to meet the needs that our body needs. When it gets into distraction or indulgence is when you are uh, leaning into the area where you're avoiding actually processing the emotion uh, or the stress that you're trying to address. So for example, if I am, say I'm uh, gonna tell myself like, I'm, I'm gonna go get my nails done and go shopping for self-care. That's one thing, but if I go and spend $500 and now I'm in debt, that's created another problem. And it might have also been a distraction from the stress I was feeling. So self-care is about intentionally doing something to meet a need or help process a particular emotion or stressor. It also doesn't mean that you're trying to like, be like happy and positive all the time. It's more mm -hmm. about being balanced so that you can experience a range of different emotions and have the skills to keep yourself or bring yourself back to balance. So creating a routine is very important because 
our bodies are based on rhythm. So our circadian mm -hmm. rhythm of our sleep and wake cycles, um, our like our heartbeat, our hormonal rhythms, all of those things are our body's ways of trying to maintain a balance or what we call like a homeostasis. So when you are at different extremes, your body has operations that will try to get it back to balance. And you can also do intentional activities to help it on its way to achieve balance again. So if you have a routine, um, meaning setting intentions and plans to practice self-care activities, you're much more likely to stick to it because you can measure whether or not you've done certain uh, activities, you're organized um, and you can be more mindful about your adherence to the task. So say I wanna work on uh, staying hydrated as part of my self-care. If I just have a vague idea of like, oh, I should drink more water. And I don't think about like how much more I should drink than what I was doing before, then I might be telling myself like, yeah, I'm taking care of myself, I'm drinking more water. Um, as opposed to like, I used to drink two bottles of water a day and now I wanna make sure that I drink four or five. Or I used to sleep six hours a night and I wanna make sure, and my body feels better if I sleep for seven or eight. So being particular, because um, a lot of times our own estimations of our behavior can be inaccurate. So part of self-care is also self-monitoring. That's a good point because sometimes I think I'm doing so good mm -hmm. and it's funny you mentioned the hydration, right? So mm -hmm. I bought this bottle, doctor. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so I've seen kinda, them. You've seen these before? So I bought this bottle and I didn't realize how like sucky I am at drinking water <laughs> <laughs> until I got this bottle. And a friend of mine, she was looking at my bottle one day. She was like, so every every hour has like a setting, right? So 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. is good morning, 9 is you've got it. So seven, she said, why are you still on good morning? <laughs> <laughs> it's like 3 o'clock. Why are you still on good morning? Exactly. So I think that's so important that you mentioned the self-monitoring because that is important. Mm -hmm. It's so important. So... Um, the Conda said she has a comment for us. She said she's working on creating a routine for herself mm -hmm. um, and she has one for her children, but not one for herself. And she's noticing how it's really taking a toll on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Self-care can be hard when you have other responsibilities to prioritize. Like, you know, as a parent, you want to make sure you're um, thinking about the safety and well-being of your children. Mm -hmm. But I think another thing that helps with like this idea of a routine is that like self-care is not like a separate activity that you do. It's like your life. Um, so part of uh, practicing self-care is also like small moments of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So even if it's like a, a while you're like watching your kids play, I don't know how old, she didn't mention how old they are, but like, say you're watching your kids play and you notice that your mind is like preoccupied by all the things you have to do for the whole week. Um, part of taking care of yourself mentally uh, could just be as simple as like taking a deep breath, being in the moment, enjoying watching your kids. A lot of the women that I work with on the uh, trauma study because they have all of their like PTSD symptoms and anxiety like uh, going on in their minds, it's hard for them to um, have positive interactions with their kids sometimes. Not saying that that's the case for her, but we teach them in the program um, positive parenting skills as a form of uh, coping and self-care. Um, and I'll even like, I'll find myself doing this when I notice like I'm really stressed uh, from just like working in life, uh, I'll be on the train and I'll like look across that like a kid in a stroller um, and notice like how the kid smiling and playing makes me feel mm -hmm. um, or like I'll make funny faces back at the kid and just like 
be mindful and tell myself like, oh, this is a really cool moment of like joy and I can feel relaxed and in the moment and have some happiness, even though I'm stressed about what I just did and what I have to do for the week. Mm -hmm. Um, So incorporating those kind of like small momentary uh, kinds of mindfulness can be really important, Mm -hmm. but also uh, I, I'm pretty sure people have heard of the whole like you can't pour from a, an empty cup and like if you're on a plane you put your breathing mask on first um, sometimes we can experience if we're like a caretaker for someone else we can experience some guilt if we want to do something to prioritize ourselves um, so taking time to remember that like you not only have to be like healthy and functioning for your kids but it's also an important uh um it's an important task of like modeling for them that taking care of yourself is important so like if your kids see oh mom is stressed and she's like after she comes home she lays down on the couch all the time and like you know um, being able to take care of yourself will help your, ki- your children to also see that like, okay, when mom feels stressed or she's anxious, she does this thing that helps her calm down. And I can do that too. Um, or even a lot of times in our program, we teach women uh, different breathing techniques or relaxation techniques that they can also teach and do with their children. So you can like, make self-care into a game and like uh Mm -hmm. use different analogies that are kid friendly for them to do like breathing exercises or stretching and um there are some books out about like mindfulness for children that are fun for them to do um that you can also do with them awesome that's great Mm -hmm. so nakanda has another comment i just want to read that before we go to the next question, she says, my therapist told me at my last session to practice focusing on being present in the moment. I get caught up doing a million things and wonder why I'm so stressed and experiencing anxiety. This is a great reminder to practice mindfulness. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. For sure. So so what are some of these healthy habits or um, that we can incorporate in our self-care routine? Mm Um, So I wrote down some of the things that I do myself or I teach other people um, and that are like found in research to be helpful too. Um, So one is exercise. Um, Not even if it's for the purpose of like changing the size or shape of your body, but like um, being able to like move your body physically, I think for me also helps appreciate the capacities your body has and feel like thankful and grateful for whatever capabilities you have. Um, Of course, the endorphins and, you know, um, chemicals and neurotransmitters that are released when we exercise. Um, And then also just like the sense of achievement, like if you're setting a goal in terms of the amount of weight that you're lifting or how far you're running, it is very like uh, motivating to set something and like get it done uh, in terms of uh, exercise. And then some other things that I do or encourage people to do that are, you know, um, facilitate self-care or can be their own forms of self-care are like cooking if you enjoy cooking and like meal prepping so that if you're able to prepare meals for the week or even for a couple of days it uh planning takes away the anxiety of having to make impulsive decisions in the moment um and also can help you plan to eat healthier foods um things like reading um like uh, getting massages or taking care of your body in other ways, making sure that you have a regular uh, sleep hygiene routine. Um, Other ways of organizing yourself, like making to-do lists or calendars, doing like even um, uh, kind of like cognitive or mental self-care. So like positive affirmations. Sometimes, 
and a lot of people uh, will talk about like not stopping to realize what they have achieved or the things that they've done because they're just like on to the next thing like now there's this whole culture of like oh I'll sleep when I'm dead and like <laughs> catch flights not feelings I'm on the grind all the time or like people will be <laughs> bragging about yeah you know I only slept for three hours yesterday but I'm, I'm like grind time you know 7 a.m ready to go like that's fine for you if you want to do that but like I want to live a long and healthy life uh where I can you know achieve things but also enjoy myself mm -hmm. so sometimes I'll uh just like affirm uh things that have gone well during the day or things that I'm grateful for or like um if I was really anxious about something but I did it anyway I'll like remind myself like I did that and I feel good about it. And like, I was worried, but I got it done. Or like, I did really well at that, even though I thought I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, and then other kind of like breathing exercises um, and also therapy. So like people ask me, do therapists go to therapy? Uh, yeah, in fact, in some grad schools, they require you to go to therapy. Um, to know what it's like from the patient perspective. Um, but I know in not all grad schools require you to do that, but, um, in my training, it was strongly encouraged, um, to make sure that you are okay. Um, and also know the perspective of being someone who's seeking help so that you're better informed about helping other people. So all of those things are important, um, things like areas to think about and things I do myself and things that I uh, encourage other people to do. Yeah, so I, so the meal prep for me is a big thing. Like, mm -hmm. I like every, not, well, I don't wanna say every Sunday cause I've just skipped a couple Sundays. I'm gonna be <laughs> honest, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've skipped a couple Sundays, but um, usually on Sundays, what I'll do is I'll prep like my, um, my breakfast and my lunches. That way I don't have to uh, like mm -hmm. you said, worry about impulsively going to the McDonald's, going to the Burger King, getting the pizza. Um, that way I can, and it's, it's, it makes me feel proud of myself that, yeah, yeah. like I made this pretty salad yeah. <laughs> you know? and I'm saving money and I'm eating healthy. Oh, yeah. And, yeah mm -hmm. so that like the meal prep is big for me and the whole giving myself credit. Like I have a, um, I created like a little, um, things I did list uh, mm -hmm. spreadsheet for the for the community where they can kind of check in with themselves at the end of the day and kind of write down everything that they did. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of a things to do list, a things I did list so they can give them I like that. credit. Yeah, so, um, so I'm all about the whole giving yourself credit because for a very long time, that was a struggle for me. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a struggle for um, a lot of women in the community. So yeah, yeah, so those two are really, really big ones for me. So let's see, we have a comment from Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And she says, sometimes breaking a routine leads to a domino effect of other activities getting lost along the way. Mm -hmm. You have some techniques for getting back on track. For example, for me, um, for example, for me, I fall off the wagon first thing in the morning. I end up pushing the other routine activities off with promises to start over tomorrow. And I end up just falling way behind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm guilty of that too. Mm -hmm. So this is called the abstinence violation effect. Um, and it comes from research in the substance abuse field where like um, for a long time, the model of like uh, recovering from substance abuse was just that like you're supposed to take these steps and get sober and then like you should just be sober forever um but they found that like people who were maintaining a routine of sobriety for a long time but then like had a relapse it ended up spiraling into like um uh like drinking more and then also having a lot of like psychological uh symptoms of like feeling shame and feeling guilt about not completing the task perfectly 
Um, and so that shame and guilt can perpetuate like, oh, well, if I failed at this, then I'm like uh, a complete failure. Every pro all the progress that I made up to this point doesn't mean anything. I might as well just keep drinking or take more drinks or whatever. And that can be the same with other types of behavior that we're trying to adhere to. So for example, the whole like New Year's resolution gym effect of like, um, in the first two weeks of January, the gym is so crowded, everyone's ready, everyone's going hard. And then in February, nobody, none of the new people stay or like the regular people are still there, but like no one, you know, people stop. And that's like an effect of people who make these grand kind of goals of like, I'm gonna like new year, new me, I'm gonna go to the gym six times a week, no matter what. And then they go, uh, they might go one or two days. And then on the third day, they're not feeling it or less motivated. So they don't go. And then that sense of failure tears down their whole plan, or yeah. makes them discount the two days that they actually went and achieved it. And so then they lose the motivation to continue trying. So how do you escape the abstinence violation effect? So part of it is kind of like we were discussing, like giving yourself the credit for mm -hmm. what you achieved up to that point. Um, so like literally saying to yourself, uh, I went to the gym Monday and Tuesday. I can do it again because I have done it nothing about me is like there's nothing defective about me that's making me unable to continue doing this um so reminding yourself that you've achieved it before you can keep going uh every moment is a new moment and every day is a new day to take at least one step forward um and then the other thing is like challenging those negative thoughts so like when you find yourself falling off of whatever routine it is, um, what feelings are you having and what thoughts or messages are you giving yourself? Like, are you telling yourself uh, some of those messages of like um, failure? Are you feeling shame or guilt about not adhering to the plan perfectly um, and challenging some of those thoughts? Um, so for example, if I'm the person who went to the gym twice and then stopped and I feel so bad about myself, like I might spiral into thoughts of like, oh, I can never do this. I'm never going to be a fit fitness person. Um, I fail at everything I do or like spiraling down. Part of challenging those thoughts is like giving yourself counter evidence. Um, so like remind yourself of other things you've achieved before. Um, some of us have probably all of us have achieved something in our lives. Um, so I'm reminding yourself of those achievements you've had before. Um, and also letting yourself know that like, it's okay to take a break and assess the goal and replan so that it's more feasible to get done. So like, if I'm the person who the gym person and I don't go on Wednesday that doesn't mean that like I can't make Wednesday a break to go and reevaluate that like maybe I didn't need to start with thinking I would go six days a week all of a sudden and maybe I can start with three days a week so that achieving a realistic goal will keep motivating me um when it comes to things like, it sounds like the person that had the comment has like a specific uh, steps in their routine. Um, I would break it down into like even smaller steps um, and kind of like take one baby step out of, at a time. So for example, like if one of your steps is going to the gym in the morning, just tell yourself, I'm gonna put on the leggings. Like I'm gonna put on the clothes. When you take that step, you're more likely to start going to the gym than if you just laid in bed. Then when you have that step done, like, like tell yourself, I'm going to the gym. When you're at the gym, you're probably gonna work out or you'll be more likely to work out than going all the way back home and going to lay in bed. 
it kind of is like uh like nike like just do it in a way Mm -hmm. um it's called in psychology we call it behavioral activation so sometimes we can end up feeling uh or like going into a state of depression because the activities that we're trying to do in our environment become less rewarding and then so we kind of like enter this passive state of like well I'm just gonna do nothing and so you have to kind of like plan the small steps to take to do even like one like one percent of an activity um, or something that might be enjoyable so that you can be on track to potentially doing more, uh, uh, m- like be more active and involved. And so, yeah, it's, it can be hard. It, it's hard because for me, I've struggled with the whole all or nothing thing. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm going to lose a hundred pounds by April or I'm just mm-hmm. not going to lose any weight at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, I, I didn't go to the gym seven days a week, so I'm a complete failure. So mm-hmm. I like the whole fact, and Rochelle said too, and like Nakia says, every day is a new day to start again. Rochelle yeah. says she loves the whole replanning thing. Cause that's, I like how you said that because maybe you do need to take a break and just sit down and just say, hey, maybe I don't have to go seven days a week. I can go three days a week, like just to yeah. reassess and replan. So that's very helpful. Very mm-hmm. helpful. Thank you for that. Okay, let's see. Um, So you kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who says they don't have time for self-care? So yeah, self-care, I would say self-care is your life. Like, um, so a lot of times, people kind of like I described people kind of in their mind are separating it into like I'm gonna live life and do things I need to do and then on Saturday at four o'clock I'm gonna do self-care but like you there are a lot of things you need to be doing to be like functioning well all the time um and so I would tell that like from the day that we're born, we are like, and being taken care of by our caregiver, we're starting to develop the capacity to like relate to other people because we're dependent on that other person, but also um, starting to develop the capacity to soothe ourselves. So like the things that like infants do, like learning how to soothe themselves to sleep by like, uh, using emotion regulation like learning to learning that it's okay to cry and like not having to be picked up all the time and being able to put themselves to sleep or like sucking on their thumb or doing different activities and motor skills to like feel comfort and feel um uh those kind of uh sensations or also like the basic things like learning to eventually eat by themselves and all those things um the same way that someone took care of you, like you are your caretaker now because you've learned those capacities. So you always need to be taking care of yourself um, with those basic foundational things like giving yourself enough water and food and sleep and um, regulating your emotions because you're, uh, you're your caretaker now. Um, So not thinking of it as like a separate thing or an additional thing to like your life. Um, And I would also tell a person like, they feel like they don't have time for self-care, like, or they feel like it's like, for some reason, like absolutely impossible to make time for an extra like concrete activity. then again to like practicing that mindfulness during whatever their regular responsibilities might be so like um, there's one relaxation technique that we call progressive mux- progressive muscle relaxation because sometimes you can find like you're holding tension in your body and not even notice it like have you ever seen someone who like 
their face, their eyebrows are like this, and they're and you wonder like, do they just is that their, just their face all the time? <laughs> but like they're holding a lot of tension in their face or whatever because they're feeling like distressed or anger or whatever. Or someone who's walking around and their like shoulders are up to here, and they're just you know you can see the tension in them. So progressive muscle relaxation is like. Um, if the person feels like they don't have, they could do this sitting at their desk working. Um, you tense and release different muscle groups in your body so that you start to be more conscious of the distinction between that tension and relaxation that you might not have noticed before. So for example, like even if it's like squeezing your fist together for 10 seconds and then letting it go, or like holding your shoulders up mm -hmm. and then releasing them and breathing out some of the tension that you feel in areas of your body. Like that's something um, that you can do without any extra time, as well as some of the other things like carrying a bottle of water that doesn't take extra time to necessarily do to keep yourself hydrated um, or just like breathing, like being mindful about uh your breath and or taking a couple deep breaths if you're feeling uh distressed or things that you can do in your minds like giving yourself uh affirmations for the positive things that have happened uh during the day or giving yourself like validation or reassurance uh you don't necessarily need like a separate time for a lot of these things another thing too is to reconsider your priorities like um as best you can so like I remember a mentor once told me to not it with the whole question of work-life balance like don't try to fit life around work mm. fit work into your life like you're always going to be until you're dead you're going to be living your life and work is a part of your life but if you're trying to like do work and focus all of your energy and stress into doing whatever responsibilities and then have like a separate time where you're living life, um, then it kind of creates like an imbalance where uh, you end up kind of like mentally organizing it so that you feel like you're not living enough life because you're working so much. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can see work as part of your life, um, and find hopefully at least some aspects of your work enjoyable, um, then doing all of the other activities uh, involved in self-care for your life uh, to make other parts of your life easier, like work or other responsibilities will come more naturally with that like shift in thinking. Awesome. And so Rochelle said um, she wanted to thank you for providing her with very helpful information that she can put into practice immediately and easily. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So, um, so what advice would you give to those who are struggling and feel that they aren't able to establish a routine to, you know, fight their depression? So it's like, people who are just like they just can't even get out of bed mm -hmm. let alone think about you know a routine for self-care like they just they don't want to they don't want to be mindful they don't want to do the like what do you say yeah. yeah I mean if it gets to that point where it's affecting your functioning that severely um mm -hmm. definitely find resources to see a professional um psychologist psychiatrist uh any kind of mental health professional. Mm -hmm. um, but again, back to like making goals that are smaller and more attainable. Like a lot of people who are severely depressed and like can't get out of bed. Um, a lot of times um, it's like just like a neurochemical thing where like the depression is just that severe. Um, but if you are, um, sometimes the, that's like similar cycle of like, oh, I should be doing all of these things and getting up and going and I'm not, can be the same kind of like, uh, 
cycle of that abstinence violation effect where like if if I can't imagine myself bringing myself to get out of bed and go to work or see friends or do all these things then I'm not going to do anything um kind of like perpetuates that Mm self-defeat um and sense of like uh worthlessness that goes along with depression so in terms of making the goal smaller a lot of people that I've um treated in therapy who've had um significant depression it's like getting out of the bed like recognizing that as the achievement the first achievement at least like even if you take one leg out of the bed but then take those steps to like recognize you did that bring the other leg out of the bed even if you're just standing by the bed standing up and not just laying in the bed that's gonna make it more likely that you might go brush your teeth Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. might go have the energy and motivation to then get in the shower there's also some um I'm forgetting the specific study but there's some research about like visualization so like like it's kind of like a mental rehearsal of behavioral activation so like and I kind of do this sometimes too where if you can imagine yourself getting out of the bed and then going to brush your teeth and take a shower or whatever um you're more likely to increase motivation to actually do it that's funny I do that yeah I don't oh so what is it called visualization yeah visualization or like a mental rehearsal mental rehearsal I do that like I'm in bed in the morning and I'm like okay and I'm like literally my eyes are closed like I'm gonna get up and I'm like I'm picturing myself getting out the bed going to the I thought I was weird No, that's, it's actually like a very helpful coping uh, technique. And I do it too. Like, even sometimes I'll like, uh, it can be like projected a little bit into the future. Like I notice when I, when I know that I have something to do the next day, Mm -hmm. the night before I'll imagine myself like definitely getting up when the alarm rings and like taking the steps to prepare for that thing I need to do early in the morning. Um, and it helps me to get up more easily than if it's a day where I don't have anything important to do or whatever. Or like even when I'm exercising or working out or like uh, feeling ambivalence about going to the gym, I'll just imagine myself like, and I'll think, and I'll do some of those like cognitive reframing things like, I've done this workout before, I can do it again. And then I start imagining myself just doing the squats. And then it's like, yeah, how, what's the worst that could happen? It's not like now my legs are gonna stop working. And also like realizing that sometimes kind of like, like I mentioned, like you are your caregiver. Like if you had a kid Uh, some of us have actual kids but if you had a kid you wouldn't just like let the kid not go to school and sleep all day if they didn't want to go or like or whatever so sometimes you have to just like activate yourself to do things even if you are anxious or not motivated or um not necessarily in the optimal Sometimes people think they need to be like completely 100% ready and stable Mm -hmm. and like at peace to start doing something new or start doing, you know, but sometimes you need to just go do that thing while you're anxious or scared or sad because it's an important thing to do, like eating healthy food, drinking water, going to exercise seeing friends or family that you haven't seen in a long time who are close to you. Um, So yeah, kind of just like uh, mental rehearsal really uh, works for a lot of the people who are maybe like physically stuck in their depression and setting those small goals to just like imagine yourself taking the first step will make it uh, more likely that you'll actually take that step. And then recognizing and 
uh, whether it's just like affirming yourself to give yourself an, a, a reward, like, wow, like I got out of bed today, like taking a real moment to notice that you did that and then moving on to the next step. Um, because sometimes we're, we're avoiding doing things because the goal is just like too grand. So like one step at a time um, really is a helpful way to think about it. Yeah. Well, we're almost to the end of the show, um, Doc. And let me tell you, I feel like you've been telling my story this whole <laughs> I feel like I was in a session because you are just telling my story. <laughs> oh my, and I mean, everything that you've said has been extremely helpful. Thank extremely you. I appreciate helpful. it. Yeah. So if, is there like one like final takeaway that we should all, one final thought that you want us to just remember about mm -hmm. self-care and routine? The, one of the other things I wrote down um, in my notes to some of the questions are uh, kind of back to that idea that like self-care is your life like you're 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 the person who has to take care of yourself to maintain that balance um a lot of the things that we can do now in terms of self-care that we might like take for granted mm -hmm. um can have significant effects going forward like preventing chronic stress um thinking of self-care as like main maintenance and prevention um, so that certain stressors won't be exacerbated or to like uh, address certain, um, uh, certain uh, issues with mental health. Um, but also like a lot of the symptoms of different types of mental illness are like extreme versions of lack of self-care. Um, or can result from neglecting your self care. So like I've had, uh, I've had patients before who like finally realized that they were in a depressive episode because all of a sudden they're like, oh, I lost 30 pounds in the past six months and I didn't realize how much I wasn't eating or having an appetite. So if you're able to like, uh, we call it like, like metacognition, like thinking mm -hmm. about your thinking, um, being able to observe yourself and like self-monitor so that you can prevent uh, worsening of different symptoms of mental illness is another reason why self-care is really important. Um, and also changes to your lifestyle and your practices of self-care can make other things more effective. Uh, particularly it makes therapy more effective oh, so wow. if you're taking care of yourself like and you're uh, eventually achieving like balance and like a clear mind where you can process different things it'll help you to come into therapy or whatever type of mental health support you're getting to better take in information and utilize skills that you might be learning um, and also like have more data or information about your experience to share with the therapist and get feedback on. Um, and so a lot of those things, if you're not practicing self-care, it also affects your body physically with like chronic stress issues with your immune system and can be related to like physical illnesses too. So I would say the takeaway thing is like self-care is you're, it's like a basic foundational practice of your life. It's kind of like doing intentional things to keep your engine going in the most optimal way to achieve balance so that you can fulfill or succeed in other parts of life that you want to engage in. Um, take one step at a time and it can be as little as like telling yourself the things that you did today, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, or it can be as little as like mentally rehearsing a small step that you want to take to get something done um, or taking a deep breath. It doesn't have to be a whole like fall weekend extravaganza, <laughs> but 
um, definitely those small steps are important in building blocks. Thank you so much. That was extremely helpful. Oh my gosh, I really, 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 really appreciate it. No problem. You coming on tonight, taking time out of your busy schedule um, to sit down and chat with us about self care. So, um, Mindful Nistas, we're at the end of our show, The Mental Health Mentor. And we were speaking with Dr. Mercedes um, Okasi. Okosi. Okosi. Yeah. Okosi. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she was talking to us about self-care and how it's just a basic part of our everyday maintenance, wellness maintenance. It's not an extra thing. It's not like how Instagram shows all the spa days and the, mm -hmm. and the, the what is it? The, the baths with the bath bombs. And I mean, that stuff is nice. Yeah, you can it's, do that stuff. That's like a luxury. It's thing, a luxury, you know. but um, breathing, right? Making sure we're drinking our water, ladies. I I know I'm. Y'all know about me and water. They know about me and water, doc. <laughs> they know me and my water situation. Um, but yeah. So again, um, take heed. I hope you guys were taking notes. If not, that's okay. You can watch the replay. And that is it for tonight. Again, my name is Regina Renee from My Full and Melanated, and we were just on the mental health mentor. Thank you, and have a great night.